uh, I became aware of uh, Marian apparitions that were taking place over in Medjugorje. Uh, then it was called Yugoslavia. I think it's called Bosnia over there now. But anyway, uh, you know, I was part of a charismatic uh, Catholic charismatic uh, prayer group for a season, and uh, my wife Kathy and I happened to meet people who were in that group who had previously visited this uh, place called Medjugorje, and they told us different stories about uh, what happened uh, while they were over there. Remember, uh, some of them said that their rosary beads, um, that the link between uh, holding the beads, the chain, uh, was silver, but when they went over there, it turned to gold. And uh, others would tell the story as they were looking into the sun, uh, they saw these beautiful colors coming out of the sun and uh, like gold liquid or something, uh, if I remember correctly. So all of these little uh, types of mini miracles they were talking about. And at the time, we were uh, enthralled by what we were hearing. We like, whoa, that's unbelievable. Wow, you know. Uh, you know, so that went on for a season until I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank God that I can speak to you today about these things because I am now on the other side. I came out from the darkness of Roman Catholicism. I make no bones about that. Ladies and gentlemen, I see many people being swept up with this ecumenical movement, uh, this uh, unity that's being called for. It's a counterfeit unity. And many, many are just simply silent, even though they know uh, the real deal, but they don't want to uh, get involved in, in the whole thing. So uh, I'm going to start here by talking a little more about this uh, Medjugorje thing. You know, these apparitions uh, that were uh, going on over there, these appearances of what they say are Mary. Basically, those apparitions had been going on since 1981, okay? And believe it or not, those uh, apparitions continue to this very day. I believe there was like five uh, young, what you would call visionaries, and um, they would receive, besides these messages from uh, whom they believed to be Mary, uh, these secrets. I think there were ten secrets, and uh, this apparition of Mary would reveal the secrets to to some of them and not to others, and some you know, had to wait longer and so on and so forth. But <laughs> believe it or not, that's still goes on to this very day. So, you know, many people say, well, you know, the Roman Catholic Church, they don't approve all, of all these things and so on and so forth. Well, you know, I happen to have a book. What I do, you know, a lot of times I'll buy a book, I'll purchase a book, just to compare to what Rome is still teaching, you know, t today, and comparing it to what the scriptures uh, teach. So, you know, I happen to uh, purchase a book quite a while ago, a book called God Sent. It's called A History of the Accredited Apparitions of Mary. And the author was Roy Abraham Varghese. I think that's the way you pronounce it. And in that book, uh, Mr. Varghese, uh, page 184, he says, Medjugorje is without doubt the most influential apparition of the century after Fatima. Okay, so that was on page 184. And uh, in that book, almost 29 pages uh, were dedicated to that Medjugorje apparition. As, and as I said, um, it's, been, it's still going on. And hear me now, millions upon millions upon millions of people have visited this place in the past and still uh, visit that place. Now, what I'm going to be doing here now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be quoting from another book I sent away for another book. Man, this just was like, gee, 30 years ago. Uh, it's called Words from Heaven, uh, Messages of Our Lady uh, from Medjugorje. And that's what they would uh, refer to, uh, uh, Our Lady. I think the visionaries call it Gaspa. Uh, and the, but this book was written, it just says, by two friends of Medjugorje, by St. James, published in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, went through, I think when I bought, purchased that book all the way back in 1990, I think it was. Uh, it was already in its third print in 10,000 copies. So the book uh, had some uh, play. I mean, it went around. So uh, it's called Words from Heaven. On the back of that book, there's a quote from uh, these Medjugorje apparitions, January 25, 1987, 
disapparition said, I have a great plan for the salvation of mankind. So this is what the apparition is saying. We know. I mean, if you want the, uh, the God's salvation plan, all you have to do is open up the Bible and you'll be able to see how you can get saved. And I speak to you as a person who's been saved. I've been born again of the Spirit. Grew up. I was raised as a Roman Catholic. So, uh, you know, I know what it's like to be on that other side, folks. And if you're a Roman Catholic listening uh, today, I encourage you, uh, listen carefully to what I'm saying. You know, I, I, I'm not your enemy. I, I'm, I'm bringing this forth so that you may see the truth and that you might uh, come out of that religious system known as the Roman uh, Catholic Church. And, and I hear me now. I used to defend these um, apparitions to the hilt. I mean, I dug in my heels. So I know what it's like to be on the side that you are on now. Listen to this, John uh, chapter 16, verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Powerful uh, portion of scripture, the spirit of truth. That's speaking about the Holy Spirit. So the scriptures let us know that he he's not speaking from himself. Uh, he's speaking, you know, it, it, l l let me just read that to you again. It says, whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. So who's he hearing from? We're dealing, we're dealing with the Father and the Son. So this is the beauty of uh, the, the triunity of the Godhead. So the Holy Spirit is going to show uh, you what you need to know, ladies and gentlemen. And that's the way it works. And, and it goes in verse 14. He shall glorify me. This was Christ who was speaking. He shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. So... Um, He's not speaking from his own prompt to me, he's speaking as, as he's hearing from the Father and the Son, okay? So the Holy Spirit will show you things to come, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, these apparitions, not only at Medjugorje, you know, many of these apparitions, they'll be prophesying of events to come, okay? That's not the job of, of Mary. Uh, and, and I'm going to show you very clearly that this is not Mary who is appearing in these apparitions, okay? I'm going to show you very clearly that we are dealing with demon spirits who are disguised as Mary. I'll make that very clear to you from the get-go here, ladies and gentlemen. So we're dealing with a very serious issue. So these messages that are coming forth from this uh, so-called apparition of Mary, who they call Mother Mary, the Blessed Virgin, and so on, um, they're attempting to tell uh, these visionaries things that only the spirit of the living God can show uh, to people, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, the word uh, apparition basically means anything that appears unexpectedly or in an extraordinary way, especially a strange figure appearing suddenly and thought to be a ghost. Uh, so uh, that's from the Webster's New World Dictionary, Second College Edition. So let's get started. Hey, Isaiah 8 and 20, it says, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Okay, so uh, you, you must understand, folks, that the, if you understand anything from this message, dig into the word of God for yourself. Search the scriptures uh, even today to see if what I'm telling you is true. That's what uh, you should be doing. Look at this Acts um, 17 verses 10 and 11. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who come and thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. See, that's the, um, that's the heart that God desires his people to have. They dug into the word of God. They heard preachers, but they wanted to know, you know, if what the preachers were preaching and speaking 
lined up with the scriptures. And, and that's a good thing to do, ladies and gentlemen, especially, you know, as I'm dealing with this topic of, of these um, apparitions, because uh, this is the case of uh, young visionaries seeing these visions and, 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 and these uh, apparitions are coming forth with a message. So, and what, what happens is they're taking it to heart as if it's the real Mary, okay? The Mary that they think uh, was the mother of Jesus Christ, okay? The mother of Jesus, all right? So, uh, they may mean well, but folks, we're talking about deception here. We're talking about your very soul. We're talking about where you are going to spend eternity. So let's get started here. I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to put it up on the screen here. As I said, I purchased these books, you know, I got saved and I wanted to warn others, you know, so this was a long time ago. I bought this book, so it's marked up. I, I used to put these little arrows and so on and so forth, highlighting the book just to see and compare it, you know, with a Bible side by side. This is how you do it, folks. You, you know, that's what drew me uh, to Christ. Uh, you know, my, my wife got saved first, and, and she started to tell me things, and I, I, I wasn't listening. I was still on the other side. There's a battle for the soul, folks. There was a battle for my soul, you see? Satan had me in, in his headlock, folks. I was on my way to hell. That's right. I was on my way to hell. And, uh, you know, when I got saved, folks, when I was truly born again of the Spirit, you know, just the joy of getting saved, but at the same time, uh, the reality of how wicked this devil is, you know, it, it blew me away. I was like, whoa. And I knew that there were literally millions, hundreds of millions of Roman Catholics who were still believing the very things that I was believing just moments earlier. Folks, that's the power of the Holy Spirit to set the captives free. Here we go, July 18th, 1985. This is what the apparition uh, that appears to these visionaries spoke. Dear children, today I call you to place more blessed objects in your homes and call everyone to put some blessed object on their person. Bless all the objects and thus Satan will attack you less because you will have armor against him. Thank you for having responded to my call. So this is this uh, apparition coming forth with a message. And you will find none of this, folks, in the Bible. You will not find uh, the scriptures teaching you to put blessed things uh, on on your person or or on the on the uh, walls, folks. This is this is not to be found. You know, in fact, the Bible speaks against all of this type of thing, graven images and all of this other stuff, folks. So I used to do this. You know, growing up as a Catholic, yeah, I had that crucifix on a wall. You know, the crucifix, crucifix. You know, that's a that's a dead uh, graven image of of what people will say is Jesus Christ when he died. Nobody knows what he looked like, folks. And is we don't know. So so this is graven image of a dead Christ. Oh yes, absolutely. And um, in fact, you know, I remember when Kathy's mother uh, died. Um, gee, we're talking 2007. And um, she didn't have control over how the uh, funeral was being worked out there. But, you know, you know, Kathy's mom came to know the Lord uh, shortly before she died. And um, that's a whole story how the Lord kept her alive. By the way, she had an operation uh, and... Uh, you know, the doctor basically said, you know, it don't look good and so on. I mean, she was dying. She was 75 years old. And we just prayed and thank God. That she, she lived close to another 15 years. Glory to God. That is the mercy of God, folks. And uh, anyway, at the, uh, at the wake, you know, what they do, if, if you're Catholic, they put rosary beads uh, around the hands. And, um, you know, we walked into the funeral parlor. The first thing Kathy did, she took the rosary beads off the hands. And she noticed there was a crucifix above the casket. And she went into the funeral director and she says, could you please remove that? We, we don't believe in a dead Christ. We believe in uh, that he's alive today. Glory to God. So that's what I'm talking about, folks. These these objects that you would carry. We prayed the rosary. We, we prayed to Mary. Uh, we wore these things, the miraculous medal and everything else, folks. So that's what that is talking about. Uh, look at this message from this apparition, August 8th, 
1985. Dear children, today I call you especially now to advance against Satan by means of prayer. Satan wants to work still more now that you know he's at work. Dear children, put on the armor for battle and with the rosary in your hand, defeat him. Thank you for having responded to my call. Folks, that's demonic. Huh? These are demon spirits. As I said, this is a demon spirit that's speaking to these visionaries, all right? Telling them to pray the rosary. I prayed the rosary, folks. I did this. Thousands of Hail Mary prayers uh, in the course of my lifetime uh, as a Catholic, folks. And uh, so, so this is a deception. You will not find uh, any of the apostles or any instructions to pray the rosary, folks. This is deception. Okay, that's exactly what it is. You will not find that at all in the scriptures. Um, very important that you know these things. November 8th, 1981, this apparition. It says, Our Lady appears uh, kissing and lovingly embracing a picture of John Paul II. And this is what that apparition said. He's your father, the spiritual father of all. It is necessary to pray for him. My Bible says in Matthew, Matthew 23 and 9, And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. My father's up above, folks. He's, he's not uh, sitting in the Vatican on a throne, folks. N not at all. And, and, and you need to, to know these things. So all of these things, you know, that, that these apparitions are saying, you know, the, the, the blessed objects, put them in your home, wear them, uh, uh, pray the rosary. My Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 and 12, put on the whole arm of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And that's what's going on, folks, at all of these apparitions. I'm dealing mainly with the one in Medjugorje. This is the one that I, uh, as I said, I didn't go there, but, you know, I knew about these messages. I used to follow it, you know, for quite a while, you know, uh, when I was in that charismatic uh Movement. So what we're dealing with here, folks, is spiritual wickedness in high places. The devil is after their souls. The devil is after your soul. If, if you're a Roman Catholic today, you're, you're still doing these things. I'm, I'm telling you, you're, you're in deception, just like I was. And this is why I'm bringing forth uh, this message. So that when we talk about uh, spiritual armor, you know, the, the, the Bible tells us that, that we're fighting against these powers. We're told to have our loins girt with truth, to put on the breastplate of righteousness. That's the righteousness of Christ. Uh, have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh, take on the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. We're told to pray. So, you, you know, you can look that up for yourself. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. You know, the devil is very well aware of what the scriptures teach, folks. He, he likes to mix it up. He'll throw in some truth here, but he'll throw in enough error and enough lies to basically distort the truth so that the truth has not the proper effect in your soul. He does not want you to know the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this, March 15th, 1984, okay? So uh, before the, I quote to you what they said, uh, it said, This day, like every Thursday evening, the faithful were worshiping the most holy sacrament, but this evening it was noticed that many people remained in the church for adoration, although they had worked hard in the fields. Okay, if you don't know what the most holy sacrament is, folks, that's talking about the the Eucharist, uh, as I did in the message, in fact, yesterday, you can find it, uh, the Eucharistic adoration. And sometimes they'll take that, what they call the Blessed Sacrament and carry it around in what is known as a monstrance, okay? Uh, the Blessed Eucharist, they believe that's the body, soul, uh, blood, divinity of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to put a picture on the screen, as I did in the other message. You see that monstrance there, folks. Inside, you see in the middle, in the center, it's white. 
uh, that is holding what is known as a host. It's a wafer host. They believe that after the priest does transubstantiation, that that is in fact Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. So here's what this apparition says. March 15th, 1984. Tonight also, dear children, I'm grateful to you in a special way for being here. Listen to this. Unceasingly adore the most blessed sacrament of the altar. I am always present when the faithful are adoring. Special graces are then being received. So, so here's this uh, apparition, this demon power disguised as Mary, telling these people to adore this blessed sacrament. Take a look at that on your screen. There it is, folks. Uh, and, and it doesn't have to, that's in a monstrance, so it doesn't always have to be in a monstrance, but uh, it, once that uh, transubstantiation takes place, folks, those Eucharists are, are now consecrated. They're considered holy, considered to be Jesus Christ. So in the monstrance, it's called, you know, it's the blessed sacrament. So people will worship that. That's what they do. They're adoring that. And that is how they are taught. Now look on your screen. This is from the catechism that I grew up with, folks. And it talks very, very clearly uh, there. It's talking about the first commandment of God and what it commands and what it forbids. So it's talking about the worship of God. And you'll see there in that illustration is a transubstantiate. That's the monstrance, okay? That's the blessed sacrament. And they're talking about worship of God, that this is good. It commands you to do that. Look at that. So what is the first commandment of God? The first commandment of God is, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt ha have not, thou shalt not have strange gods before me, okay? could not be any clearer. So here's this apparition encouraging that. You see that? I think, you know, as I go over this stuff, uh, it never ceases to amaze me that I got saved. You know, because I, I used to do all of these things, folks. It never ceases to amaze me the power of Almighty God to pull me out by the Spirit of the living God. And I'm doing these things, you know, folks, this burns in me. I have to tell you, it burns in my heart. Since I got saved, I cannot stop warning people because I know how deceived I was, okay? So I do this in a spirit of love, folks. Listen to this, July 21st, 1982. This is what the apparition had to say. There are many souls in purgatory. There are also persons who have been consecrated to God, some priests, some religious. Pray for their intentions, at least the Lord's Prayer, the Hail Mary, and the Glory Be, seven times each. And the Creed, I, re I recommend it to you. There is a large number of souls who have been in purgatory for a long time because no one prays for them. So folks, you know, being in the Catholic Church is bondage. That's what it is. It's bondage. And many people, you know, because many people are not aware of what they truly believe, they just think it's just another religious denomination. It's nothing could be further from the truth. So we're dealing with uh, demon spirits here without a uh, question, folks, you know. So here's this uh, apparition preaching the, the gospel of Rome. There is no purgatory, folks. When I got saved, I knew Instantly, there was no purgatory. There's a heaven and there's a hell. Look at this, Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16. These words, by the way, were spoken by Jesus Christ himself after he was slain, killed on the cross, bloody death, and rose from the dead. So can, can you imagine this? If he's telling you to do this, folks, listen carefully. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. We're talking salvation or damnation. No room for purgatory here, folks. The doctrine of purgatory, the teaching of purgatory, is actually an insult to the complete and finished work of Jesus Christ. When I was born again, folks, I read the scriptures. I knew I was redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. What an awesome thing it is what Christ has done on the cross, folks. Uh, the blood, the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. July 17, 1986. This is what the apparition said, the demon spirit. Dear children today, I am calling you to reflect upon why I am with you this long. I am the mediatrix between you and 
God. And I'm not going to finish that. I just want you to see that I am the mediatrix between you and God. Look at 1 Timothy 2 and 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. So I, I, I assure you folks that this apparition of Mary, it is not the Mary you think it is has nothing to do with the real Mary that we find in the scriptures. It is a demonic counterfeit, a camouflage, and it's meant for the destruction of your soul. And it's the spirit of truth, folks, that brought me out of that system. So don't ever forget that. Hebrews 9 and 15, and for this cause he, meaning Christ, is the mediator of the New Testament or New Covenant, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Remember these words, John 14 and 6, glory to God. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Hallelujah. In fact, I'm going to put a picture again of that jacket I had made. I got saved, folks. I couldn't hold it back. I, I had this uh, jacket made uh, with that very verse uh, put on it. And um, I, if you don't know the story, I told you the story. I went, I, I guess, it, I guess what do you call it, embroidery or something. You know, I had a, an idea how, what I wanted to do, how I wanted to lay it out, and I explained it to the lady behind the counter, and she said, no problem at all, you know. So I didn't know what to expect. I never did anything like this before. I had the jacket, and I said, can you do this? She said, yeah. And I came back, and I was thrilled by by the way it was. I was like, whoa, this is nice. You did a nice job. And um, somehow I got into a conversation with her. And uh, it turns out she was Jewish. And I think her children, you know, they were named after the, um, uh, the uh, ones who wrote the Gospels. I, I think it was Matthew, Luke, or something like John. You know, I was like, wow. So I started to share the Gospel a little with her, talk with her and stuff like that, you know, about Jesus. And um, she, she was Jewish. And, um, you know, after a while, as I was done, you know, I, I explained, you know what I did? I, 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 I connected the Passover sacrifice with the sacrifice of Christ. That's what I did. And then she looked at me, and, and she, she sort of screamed at me. She says, what is God, some kind of a butcher or something? And I was like a little taken aback. You know, I, you know, folks, I was sweet to her. And, you know, I prayed for her, you know, inside. And, like, I know people, not everybody receives the truth, but... Uh, but there's a picture up on the screen there of the jacket that she made. If she comes to mind, pray for her, that, that the Lord would move upon her heart. Look at this Acts chapter 4, 10 to 12. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's all about Jesus Christ. So uh, the one thing I, I, uh, I want to get across here, folks, is that Satan will do anything he can to distract you from putting your total faith in Jesus Christ. And that's what he's doing with all of these Marian apparitions, not just what happened here in Medjugorje. I'm talking Lords, Fatima, and all the others, folks. That, that It's the common theme. You know, you'll, you'll, uh, with the uh, the one that uh, took place in uh, Lourdes, you know, the the uh, they, next thing you know, they're building a shrine. Uh, the one in Fatima. In fact, I'll just give you a, just a brief thing in a, in a couple of minutes, uh, but I won't go deep into it because it would just take too long. So you need to know, folks, that that Satan is your enemy. There's a war on for your soul. And, and, and the one thing you want, folks, is, is to know that Jesus Christ is the only way. He's the one you need to come to know. Look at this John 15 and 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify 
of me. There's another beautiful picture, the triunity of the eternal Godhead. I love that word, comforter. The spirit of the living God is a comforter. He will comfort you. He will bring peace to you, folks. When I was born again, he brought peace. I never had peace like this. You're always tormented. Where, where am I going to spend eternity? Huh? You know, you, you, your conscience, you, you, have, you have enough knowledge. You know, you know, you know you're not a good person. But, but, and, and you say, man, where, you know, if I die, you know, and I've said this many times, you know, I never thought heaven was a hope. And, you know, even, lo even purgatory was a long shot <laughs> for me. And, uh, but when the comforter is come, look at that. Whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me. That's Christ speaking. So the Spirit of God will always glorify Christ. He will always testify about Christ. This demon spirit is bringing attention to Mary. So it's a fake Mary. So, so the children, oh, they were younger. I mean, they were young adults, I guess, when it first started. They, they, they're, they're under the impression that they're seeing the real Mary, but it's not Mary. Okay, it's a demon spirit disguised as Mary and coming forth. So, so the demon spirit, the devil wants to take their eyes off of Christ alone. That's the key. Don't ever forget that. Look at this, John 16, verses 13 and 14. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. I said that before, but it's good to hear it again. So how do you know? How can we discern whether a prophetic messenger is from the Lord and God sent? We can discern the root source, listen, of a messenger by studying the contents of the message. If the messenger is proclaiming to speak truth in the name of the Lord, but the message is in contradiction with the word of God, it's the Bible, then God is definitely not the source of that message. Don't ever forget that, folks. So that's how you do it. You, you look at the message, you, you, you take it and examine it next to the scriptures. And, 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 you know, that's how I came out of that system. So my wife came out, you know, People witness to heart. That's the beauty of hearing the gospel. You get a Christian. Thank God for Christians that, that have a, a desire to share the word uh, with others because there, there's, a, there's a, a compassion, a burden for souls that was put there by the Lord in the first place. Okay? So listen to this, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, that's the living and the dead, it is appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch, thou in all things endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Let me tell you what's happening in the world, folks. With things such as this, these... Um, Lion signs and wonders, listen to this, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7 and 9. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, and signs and lying wonders. Folks, the lying wonders that are going on in places like Medjugorje and other places from the pit of hell. They are from the pit of hell. Here's the rest. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 to 12. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved... And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, 
that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Look at that, folks. Who sends the delusion? God. Strong delusion. You look that up in the original Greek. It, it, it's a working of error. Think about that. God allows this. He sends it. A working of error because they did not have a love of the truth. Look at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Wow. The word transform, you look it up in the original, you'll see that word disguised as part of the definition. So I want to let you know, folks, that this, uh, these apparitions, not only Medjugorje and the other main apparitions, like such as Lords and so on and so forth, that, that, that's demon spirits, folks. In fact, the one in Lords that took place uh, began like in February uh, 1858. A 14-year-old girl, Bernadette Soberus, Soberus, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Uh, she told her mother, she, you know, she was going to get together firewood, and she says a lady appeared to her. So these, this is what happens, folks, uh, when people are not aware of what can happen in the demonic realm. Uh, this is what you can open uh, yourself uh, to, and that apparition, that appearance of who this young lady thought was Mary, uh, identified herself as the Immaculate Conception. What does that mean? The Immaculate Conception is his, this uh, demon spirit uh, letting uh, the girl uh, think that Mary herself was conceived without sin. Another false doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church. It's not true. And so, you know, very, very often it, that these apparitions uh, these demon spirits would appear to young children, and that's what happened also at, at Fatima. Uh, appeared to three, you know, young children, and and that's what happened. And um, the the names Lucia, Dos Santos, her cousins Francisco and Jacinta, Marto. So that was back in 1917, and something similar. And uh, during one of the visits from the uh, this apparition, this apparition told them to say the Holy Rosary daily in honor of Our Lady of the Rosary to obtain peace and the end of the Great War. I guess they were talking about World War One. So you know this is what happens, ladies and gentlemen, uh, with, with these apparitions. You know, and and I speak as a former Roman Catholic. You know, for me to hold this in. <laughs> I can't. You know, I could just go on my merry way and say, you know, <laughs> later for you, that's your problem. I can't. You know, <laughs> the Lord won't allow me to. You know, so, and, and it's a joy for me to to share these things. It's, it's a, the, the joy of the Lord shall be your strength. It's a joy for me to tell others. You know, because I'm, I'm just sowing seed. And, and I pray that, you know, that, that the Lord would open up eyes, spiritual eyes, just like he opened my eyes. He opened uh, my my wife's eyes. And, and, and as I said, you know, my wife Kathy got saved a short time before I did. And um, I resisted her for weeks, you know. I mean, here we are. We had these videos of these... Uh, these things, you know, uh, with showing about these apparitions and stuff. And they showed these visionaries, these young adults, and, and, you know, they'd be in a room filming. You wouldn't see the actual apparition, but you'd see the reaction of the uh, the visionaries. And I, I can remember very clearly, um, you know, some of the videos, you know, when, when the apparition appeared, which you couldn't see, uh, they would throw themselves on the floor on their knees in such a way that was like, so fast it wasn't it wasn't even funny and and the look the look on their face they were looking I was like I was blown away be keep in mind folks I was deceived at that point so when Kathy you know Kathy had a Christian lady witness to her and gave her a scripture you know how Satan disguises himself and she you know troubled Kathy and she just kept praying and praying searching the scripture finally the Lord opened her eyes and then she tried to tell me and I wouldn't listen you know, for weeks, 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 and then one day, you know, she she was she was coming down the stairs, and she was she, what she would do. She would print out the scriptures. Uh, at, at one point, she had four pages of scripture refuting these um, these apparitions, folks. And uh, one day, she came down the stairs with tears in her eyes, and she said, "Listen, 
And it was something in me just grabbed me and said, listen. And I just, and I listened. And, it, you know, I, I said, okay. And, and, and a short time after that, I, I did the same thing. I examined that and I examined compared uh, to what was being said. You got to realize, folks, there's a lot of pride. You know, we had people coming over our home, watching these videos, saying, look at this, look at this. We're still in that movement. Having, we're in a charismatic Catholic prayer group, deceived as could be. And, and these people were into it much more than we were. They, they had visited it, uh, Medjugor Medjugorje already. So you got to realize, folks, but when I came out, you know, when I was born again of the Spirit, glory to God, when I was saved, uh, as I said, you know, uh, it was like, whoa, like this thing, this walk with the Lord is not a joke. We are battling against demon powers, folks. And, 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 it's, and uh, it's a miracle to be saved. I, I've said that since the day I got saved. It is an absolute miracle to be born again, folks. It is an absolute miracle when you have your eyes opened up and realize who Jesus Christ truly is, that he laid down his life. You know, I used to have a knowledge, but folks, it was a head knowledge of who Jesus Christ was. But when I was truly saved, born again of the Spirit, I knew that I knew that he came down from heaven. I knew that he was deity. You know, I never thought about these things before. I knew that he was deity. I knew that he came down. I knew that he was persecuted. And I knew he went to the cross for me. I knew that he rose from the dead. The spirit of the living God showed me these things. And that's why I warn people, folks. I'm speaking to you today. I got to keep myself from crying, folks. This is a miracle. It is a miracle to be saved. And if you're a Roman Catholic, please take heed to what you heard here today. I'm not your enemy. I'm, I'm here with the good news that, that you can be saved even today. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be justified, folks, by the blood of Jesus Christ. God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. Glory to God. So, folks, uh, you know, I poured my heart out to you today. Uh, th th this is what I wanted to tell you, folks. That's not Mary. It's not Mary. It was not Mary at any of the other apparitions, whether it be Lourdes, Fatima, Guadalupe, or anywhere else in the world. You're hearing it from a person who was into that stuff. I was into that stuff, folks. So uh, I'm going to leave it right there, and I encourage you, be blessed in the Lord.